I thought I'd do a quick video about uh, this bandsaw build, answering some questions and why I'm building what I'm building. The thing is, in this room, I've only got this bandsaw here and I've got the other bandsaw in the other room and you really need two bandsaws, one with a narrow blade for cutting curves and one with a wide blade for resawing and cutting deep stuff. And of course, I just always go in the other room to use that one with a narrow blade. But uh, rather than spending 30 seconds extra each day walking back and forth to do that in the shop, I figure I'd rather spend a month building another bandsaw to solve that problem. Seriously though, I just wanted to try to build a really big bandsaw. And this one's going to be 26 inches. And my first thought was to build something like a 36 inch bandsaw that's uh, over 90 centimeter wheel size. Because that's what the really big bandsaws are. But the problem is with a basement there is limited ceiling height and I also decided that the bandsaw should ideally still fit through a standard door and that really limits the height and I worked out that uh, 26 inches that's uh, 66 centimeters for the wheels is as big as I can go without running into problems and of course I could go bigger with a three or four wheeled bandsaw but uh, that question I've already answered in the video years ago the video is titled uh, Bandsaws bigger is better and three wheel bandsaws suck. The thing for bigger is it's all about the elbow room because quite often when cutting out some intricate shape I end up hitting the post over here so the further away that post is the better. So the width is really more for cutting intricate shapes not for cutting really big stuff. Now why did I make the wheels hollow to make them lighter? Well yes a heavy wheel could potentially stabilize things a bit more in that if the motor is way underpowered and you're cutting something really heavy and you ram it in there then it takes longer for the bandsaw to stall out but you just shouldn't be doing that because if your motor is not powerful enough you just need to cut slower so that momentum thing isn't really that useful but that momentum is harmful because it means the saw takes longer to spin up and more importantly longer to spin down after you turn it off and really the quicker it starts and stops the better. And years ago there was this company called uh, Steel City Toolworks that made a bandsaw with a lower granite wheels. I couldn't think of a more stupid idea. <laughs> now it's been suggested I could just make this out of uh, solid plywood and then cut holes into it to make spokes and that would also make it lighter and that would certainly be much easier. And some years ago Marius Hornberger built a bandsaw with the wheels out of MDF which can be quite heavy and he cut a lot of holes in it to make it lighter. But I want the wheels to have a smooth surface right here because any sort of holes, the dust really builds up in there, in my experience. And any sort of spokes or holes just make this wheel more of a fan and that helps to whirl around the dust. And that's another thing that I don't want. Now, one approach I used for my first bandsaw is just to make the wheels out of three quarter inch plywood and then add a wider flange to it. But that has a tendency of directing the dust along the edge of the wheel and then getting behind the inner tube which is a problem in this design because I like hanging the inner tube over the edge of the wheel because that's just the easiest. I could of course have a more complicated flange where the inner tube sort of fits into a slot in the flange but all this is just getting way too complicated. I'd rather just make a hollow wheel. And this comes up every single time I build a bandsaw which is why not use a bicycle wheel? It's all you got rubber on the outside and a bearing in the middle. And this one, in fact, is an e-bike uh, rear wheel. So if I found a controller for this, I'd have the motor built right into it like that. But problem is, this has only got maybe a 10 millimeter axle, whereas here I've got a one inch shaft. So this would need support on both sides, otherwise it would just bend. So I'd need some kind of complicated bracket to go around it. Now if I wasn't using this hub, the logical thing would be to make a new hub that takes say a one inch axle so that I can support it on just one side. And then I need some kind of machine part for this hub to attach the spokes to and I need new spokes and I need to rebuild the wheel. So that gets complicated. It would probably be easier if I make the wooden hub and replace the spokes just with a plywood disc. And the tires never run quite true enough for a bandsaw either. so. It would make sense to get rid of the tire and put wooden segments in here and then sort of lay those down like I did with these wheels to get that true and then put a similar sort of inner tube tire around it. 
And these things, these segments would probably be easiest to attach to here by screwing through the rim if I replace the spokes with a plywood disc, right? So now I've just got the rim left and the whole process would be a lot simpler if I just got rid of that rim as well and had these segments attached directly to the plywood disc or actually just turn down the plywood disc itself. So the best way, starting with a bicycle wheel to make a bandsaw wheel, is to throw away the whole bicycle wheel at once and just make it out of wood. And one astute observer uh, was asking about uh, getting the pulley centered on here. And you can see this is not precisely centered. It's probably about a millimeter off center. That's something I still need to work on. But just for truing them up at low speed, it doesn't really matter very much. This is running at maybe half the speed that I want to run this eventually at. I'll probably use uh, this pulley, which is almost twice the size, or I might make an even bigger wooden pulley to run this. I haven't decided yet. By the way, this motor is actually from a bandsaw, from a 12-inch Craftsman bandsaw, that I decided it wasn't worth fixing and threw off a scaffold some years ago. But it's a two-third horsepower motor, so that's not too bad. I've only got half a horsepower in this one, and I use that one uh, for cutting fairly thick stuff. And since I'm not planning on doing any sawmilling with this bandsaw, it should be enough. As for sawmilling, there's really no need to go to wheels that size because you don't need that sort of throat depth for sawmilling because it's not like I'm going to cut some piece of lumber that's 26 inches thick. So it makes more sense to go a bit smaller on the wheels. Um, realistically, a wood miser has about 45 centimeters or 18 inch wheels which uh, is a slight problem in terms of metal fatigue from bending of the blade, but going to say 20 inches or 50 centimeters is quite enough for sawmill blades. So making this bigger is all about the elbow room, not about uh, cutting capacity. And this is my 20 inch bandsaw, and I'm currently working on the design for the frame. On this one, I glued it together out of a lot of boards, but I don't have a lot of boards kicking around. And it makes much more sense to try to use, uh, say, 2x4 lumber, which is twice as thick. And uh, this frame design is not ideal for lumber that thick. So I'll use some variation of that design, but uh, trying to make it work better for thicker lumber. So there's fewer layers to glue up and just generally cheaper to buy the lumber. And this one has solid plywood wheels. The thing is, for the uh, bigger bandsaw, the wheels actually have 70% more area, so the weight becomes more of an issue. But if you wanted to build a bigger bandsaw with solid plywood wheels, that would work just fine. I just want to try something else. This is one of the new wheels compared to a 20-inch solid plywood wheel. Let's see how much they weigh. So, 20-inch solid plywood wheel is 4.2 kilograms. And a 26-inch hollow wheel is 4. Point, almost 4.9 kilograms. That's without the inner tube because with the inner tube it exceeds the uh, scale's capacity. So considering this wheel has 70% more area and is also thicker, that's not too bad.